Do you have positive emotions associated with money? Financial security is such a big part of the retirement process, and a lot of times our attitude to money can really make an impact on the way that we move forward and make the most out of this incredible time in our lives. I want to share with you today three ways that you can cultivate a more positive attitude to money and how that's going to affect your retirement. My name is Margaret Manning and I'm with 60 and Me, and I thank you so much for being here wherever you are. I'm so grateful for your time and uh, for just your support. Our show today is brought to you by International Living. Now, International Living is a company that helps people to make up decisions about moving abroad in retirement. So if you're thinking about moving to Panama, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Portugal, there's so many choices. International Living can help you. They have people on the ground doing the research and they are happy to share the resources and uh, references with you. So check out their website internationalliving.com slash 60 and me and you can just have a look at what they've got available you can give them your email address and they will send you no obligation a link to a report that might be of help to you so this and and this planning that goes on with all kinds of things is so important and i and i this topic of money is just prevalent in our society now money shouldn't be that important right we should actually uh, be getting beyond that in our 60s and 70s but truthfully we need to think about it even more because as we get older the opportunities for bringing in extra income the things that we can do to stabilize our our situation they just they don't they get a little bit more difficult as you get a little older that's just the reality of the world that we live in but there are some ways that you can change your inner uh, perception your your inner perspective on money and it is psychological it is it is an attitude shift uh, because sometimes the financial reality doesn't change we still have some challenges. But um, one of our bloggers, Daniel Howard, wrote an article with three really precise things that you can do to actually improve the way that you look at money and and, and therefore you, you know, change your whole attitude to it. The first thing, this is pretty obvious in a way, but in, in a way we don't do it enough, which is identify your strengths. When have you done a really good job with money or a really good job with your finances? Think back to a time where you actually had everything under control or maybe there never was a time when it was good. <laughs> and it was just, you know, when you actually felt like you knew what you were doing, that you, were, you had a plan, uh, you were managing your, um, your responsibilities, your debts, your, you were having, um, investing perhaps wisely. Think what were the things that you did? That, were, that really displayed your strength. I mean, even, even having a productive heart-to-heart conversation with someone about your finances, that's an accomplishment. That's the strength. Sometimes just budgeting, you know, just deciding that you're going to track your expenses and write everything down, that's an accomplishment. But think about your strengths. What are you good at? Maybe you're very good at saving money um, by, you know, being creative in the house, cooking your own meals or, um, you know, making your own clothes. Those are things that, um, you know, are responses to circumstances that you might have going on in your life. And managing them well is a skill. You know, were you resourceful? You know, did you do your homework? Were you resilient and persistent in, in reaching a goal? Did you save for something that really meant a lot to you? Those are, those are the strengths you need to look at. Were you a good listener? Did you um, read a book that, was, that you listened to and that you paid attention to and, and applied? These are things that you can consider a strength. These are your strengths. And with that attitude that you can, that you can manage your money, you can manage the ups and downs of your, of your finances because you've got these strengths. You are discerning. You are a good listener. You are um, you know, focused. You can be focused. You can make sacrifices. These are it's just acknowledge those. And that's the first thing to, on the journey to actually um, feeling like you're in control of your money and having a positive attitude towards it. Money can be your friend. <laughs> and this is this is the the, the um, oh, the, the sort of unfolding that happens when you start to create a more positive attitude. The second thing is um, find the good. Find out the good things that happened uh, as a result of money for you. Think of something that you were able to purchase that really changed your life. Maybe it was something that enabled you to do a hobby or to do um, you know, something that you loved. Perhaps it was to buy a car that enabled you to travel. Or it was to enable you to buy a ticket on a plane or, or a ship or a train that took you somewhere that you've always wanted to go. These are the things that empower 
you to, um, you know, to, to make an effort to try harder, you know, with the current situation to get to the bottom of your of your issue and solve it. So not only do you have to look at your own strengths, but look how you applied them. Look how you applied them in a real world situation, the good things that came out of money. So for example, I used a good thing is I used financial tools like mint.com or to track my expenses. And I was able to cut, you know, X number, X hundred dollars from my budget every month. That's that's a good that came out of a, an, act, an activity. Um, you know, I used, I did something, um, you know, to say I, I cut out all my uh, extra expenses related to something. And that gave me a big saving where I was able to buy my grandchildren, you know, a ticket to a, a concert. You know, something, just make the, connect the dots to something that you did and as it resulted in something good. I think that's a really powerful one too, seeing how your activities and the hard work and the the, the, chat, the um, effort you put into it resulted in something great. Small things. And this is the thing about it. It doesn't have to be like big, you know, thousands of, of dollars savings. It can just be a simple thing. Like, for example, um, I had a lot of um, monthly uh, deductions for things like, you know, subscriptions. And I just, you know, every time I found something that I loved, I would sign up for it because that was, I just liked to get the reminders and, uh, you know, the occasional benefits. And then I suddenly went back and I, I just, I just, you know, ended them all. I deleted them all or, or, you know, canceled them all. And I saved a considerable amount of money, not millions, not thousands, but it was enough to enable something else. That's the thing. So the final thing is make a gratitude uh, visit. Um, when someone um, has done something positive for you or, or you feel like you learned something from them, that they gave you a gift of their understanding and their, and their wisdom related to money, write them a letter or go and see them and actually say, you know, thank you so much for doing this to help me with my finances and be specific. You know, thank you for helping me to save the money related to this and this that, you know, you gave me that guidance. And that in itself, it, it, it's kind of like volunteering. There's kind of this buzz you get from it, like it's a goodness buzz. <laughs> and it just makes you feel like it's worth, um, you know, just worth trying to um, show appreciation for that, um, that thing that changed something important in your life. Money isn't everything, of course, but it is important and it enables us not only to buy things, but it enables us to make choices that align with who we are. I think that's so important. I really do. Um, you know, even if you can't pay a personal visit, you can do something with letter or email, but just, you know, use that gratitude. And I want to take a moment too to thank um, our, a community that we have here at 60 and Me called Patreon. And Patreon is a private group that we started t- for people that want to support us. You know, we uh, we don't charge a membership fee at 60 and Me, and we decided that we would um, open up a, a sort of private community for women uh, who could donate and be three dollars a month, some uh, amount they could afford, and in return get exclusive videos and conversations. Uh, with themselves and also with us. And I only mention this in this context because that in itself gives people a huge uh, sense of accomplishment when they can show gratitude for something that they believe in. So the people um, that joined our Patreon group and now our Facebook supporters group too, um, it's they always say that they feel so good to be part of a tribe and part of a community that's, that's there to help them. And it's in that giving and in, in that choosing about their, their relationship with their money that they give to help something they believe in. It's, to, it's all kinds of charities it relates to. And also, of course, just being a kind person, if you can share with others. So I think that money has a power. It has a power that can heal. It's a power that can transform. And it's a power that can bring joy and happiness to your life. And I think that having this positive uh, attitude makes all the difference. I'd love to know, you know do you practice positive financial thinking? <laughs> How do you feel about money? What's the, you know, what's your um, emotional relationship with your money? Hope it's good. I really do. But again, thanks for being here, everybody. I, we've got lots of articles. I mean, financial security is one of our key um, focus areas for 60 and Me. So you will find on the website a, a tab that says financial um, security, I believe. And it's got lots of articles on retirement and investing and savings and um, spending. It's, it's, I think it's a good, a good resource. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support as always. And I do look forward to coming back and chatting with you on this subject again, but um, take very good care. Bye-bye for now.